Way off in the distance there is the city of Las Vegas, which I left late yesterday afternoon. From here, I've got about 400 miles of desert that I need to cross to get to the border, which means a lot of dirt roads, a lot of mountains, and a lot of isolation. I'll also be spending my first ever Christmas away from my family. So I think this next few weeks is definitely gonna be a challenge mentally, but hopefully there's a lot of beauty and there's a lot of fun to be had out here. I've been feeling all day like my progress has been so slow because there's been so much uphill and this road is really rough. But it's great to be able to look back and see how far I've actually come. And now I get to enjoy the downhill. I've just left the gas station where I've stocked up for the next few days because I'm going to be crossing the Mojave National Preserve and out there there's just nothing but desert, there's no water, there's nowhere for me to buy food so I've got two and a half days worth of food, I've got 10 litres of water which is the most I've ever had to carry. There's some cool sand dunes in there that I'm going to check out but hopefully it's just going to be two and a half days of great riding on dirt trails and lots of beautiful scenery. When I was setting up camp last night, I noticed that this area seems to have just been completely destroyed by burning at some point. So I looked it up and apparently in 2020, an estimated 1 million trees were destroyed in the burns, which is just really sad, but I guess it's pretty common here in Southern California. It just gets so hot in the summer and it's so dry here. So today it is looking pretty grey outside and I've just had a look at the forecast and it's meant to rain a lot today. And the last place you want to be when it's raining is on a dirt road in the middle of the desert. It's not fun. So I'm going to get myself back on the highway and get myself to a cafe along Route 66 and hide from the rain. It's only about 30 miles away. Well, it started raining and I can't really complain because I haven't seen rain in literally two and a half months. Looks like I'm going to be on this tarmac for the next couple of days, so I better get my tyres pumped up. Well, I've got my rear one pumped up nicely, so that should give me a bit more speed. But I've just gone to pump the front one, and the valve core has snapped off. So I've just got to hope that doesn't deflate. Pretty soon after I started on that highway, some people saw me cycling in the rain and took pity on me and offered me a ride. So I obviously accepted. No point suffering for no reason. And I'm now at a gas station on Route 66 where I'm just getting some stuff charged up. 
And while I was sat here, I realized I have this, which is a spare valve core. So I'm gonna try and change that over without unseating my tires and giving myself a massive headache. Definitely didn't do that in the best way, but I think it's worked. Let's pump it up and see how it is. Well, now I just need to cycle a few miles to get to Amboy Crater, which is this huge lava cone that I'm gonna camp at tonight and then hike in the morning when the weather's a bit better. Because although it doesn't look that bad behind me, it's still raining in a lot of the places around here. And it's pretty windy as well. Early the next morning, I hiked to the top of the crater to watch the sunrise. It was beautiful up there and seemingly a perfect way to start the morning. What I didn't realize though is that I broke my microphone on the way up, meaning there's not a lot of audio from the next couple of days. And to make matters worse, when I tried flying my drone, the wind blew it straight into my hand and it crashed on the volcanic rock, breaking the camera. Riding away from Amboy Crater made me feel like I was cycling across Mars, but I was soon forced to join the highway for the rest of the day until I found myself a great desert camp spot. This is my happy place. While camping with a beautiful sunset, it just doesn't get much better than this. Now the next day was Christmas Eve, so I made my way into a town called 29 Palms and soon headed out to find somewhere to spend Christmas Day. Well, this is my spot out in the desert where I'm spending Christmas Day. And it's quite tough. This is the first Christmas I've ever spent away from home, away from my family. And it's probably the first time I've ever felt homesick in all of my time traveling. So it's not the easiest day, but luckily I've got phone signal here. So I've called all of my friends and family and I'm feeling a lot better. And at least I get to spend the day in this beautiful place. The sun's shining, it's like this all day. It's, it's just so nice out here. It's gonna be an amazing sunset. It's gonna be a beautiful night sky with the stars. The only downside is about probably half a kilometer away, there's a bunch of people who have just been shooting guns all day since about 8.30 in the morning but they haven't come this far up the road and no one's bothered me yet, so I think it's gonna be fine. So yeah, I'm just gonna have a day of relaxing and just enjoy myself a day off the bike. I've been going for the last six days, so it's nice to have some rest. I brought with me up here a bundle of firewood, some pepperoni, a load of veg, some potatoes. So I'm gonna make myself a nice foil Christmas dinner. It should be a real good treat and it should be a really nice day. I really can't complain about too much being out here. It was a challenging day and a sobering reminder of what I was sacrificing in order to pursue this adventure. I was soon back on the road though, ready to make my way through Joshua Tree National Park. Today I'm just going to drop the rest of the way out of this canyon and then I'm on roads all day today. I've got to make my way through a couple of towns and then there's a 5,000 foot mountain pass that I need to climb. So I'm going to get as much of that done today as possible and hopefully find a nice wild camping spot up there somewhere. Just got to make my way through a literal shooting range on the way down here.
please don't shoot me please don't shoot me couple of miles up yeah I came all the way through Joshua tree yesterday oh, yeah I was coming down here I was like please tell me they're not shooting that way <laughs> where are you from England that's sick dude yeah where are you going uh Argentina eventually oh you're going all the way yeah I started up in Alaska oh you're doing the uh, Pan American South? Highway yeah One my, my friend did that oh really oh amazing yeah, I mean, I'm loving it so far. It's been great. <laughs> well, uh, good luck and have a good time. Did you want to shoot one? You're not yeah. From, you're from England. I don't think you've ever shot one. Sadly, I don't think I'm allowed to share what happens next on YouTube. Well, that was a pretty fun way to start my morning. Now the climbing begins. Ooh, look at that. Come a long way. Well, I think this will do. I think this will do nicely. I've done about 2,500 feet of the climb, so still got a fair amount to do, but it'll be a lot nicer in the morning when it's not quite as hot. And for now, I get to just enjoy this incredibly beautiful view as the sun sets. After 3,000 feet of climbing, I've made it to the top and it's like a completely different world up here. It's just lush with vegetation. There's greenery everywhere. It's really nice to see. And I've just left the highway behind and my route now is kind of parallel to the Pacific Crest Trail, which means it's probably gonna be a lot of fun and it's definitely gonna be beautiful. Oh, this is some rough stuff. Love it.
I've done a ridiculous amount of climbing today. I've just hit the 4,500 feet mark. And I think that's probably a good time to stop and start looking for a camp spot. And I found myself in a very interesting area, which clearly recently was incredibly lush and full of greenery. But not so long ago has been a victim to the burns and the fires that's ravaged California recently. And has left behind this landscape that is just really dark and eerie. After a pretty wet and miserable day, I've now descended into an area called Black Rock, which is just this beautiful place that's just completely full of life. It's such a stark contrast to the desert I was in just a couple of days ago. And I found a really nice spot to camp right by a river. So I'm gonna to get to enjoy the sound of a rushing river as I go to sleep tonight, which is something I haven't had the luxury of doing in quite a while. This part of the route is really beautiful, though I've not been able to see all of it because of the clouds, because of the mist. So hopefully tomorrow it's a bit of a clearer day and I get to appreciate this place properly. So beautiful.
Looks like it's river crossing time. Oh yeah. My feet were getting a little hot to be fair. That wasn't too bad. Actually cooled me off a bit. Well, yesterday turned out to be one of the toughest but most enjoyable days of riding I've had. After setting off, I quickly realized that I had to do 52 miles to get to somewhere I could camp because now I'm in quite a developed area. There's obviously not that many options for camping. Now that doesn't sound like too much, but it was almost entirely mountain biking. So I was just flat out pedaling for close to six hours along amazing single track through all these beautiful canyons and gorges. It was a really great day. And now it is New Year's Day. It is officially 2024 and I am by the Pacific Ocean for the first time in three and a half months. So today I'll ride the rest of the way into San Diego, more or less bringing my time in the US to a close. I normally dread getting into big cities because I'm so accustomed now to spending time in wild and remote places so far away from lots of people that when I get to a big city it's, it's quite intense for me being around so many people, so much traffic. But I'm actually kind of looking forward to getting to San Diego and spending a few days there. It seems like a really nice city and at the very least the weather's beautiful and it's right by the ocean. So you can't really complain too much either way. I soon arrived in San Diego, which after 2,100 miles essentially meant the end of my time biking in the US. The last few months had given me everything, more natural beauty than I could have ever imagined, encounters with all kinds of magical wildlife, and countless moments that I will cherish forever. It also tested me in so many ways, allowing me to grow both as a bikepacker and as a person. I can now confidently say that the person who landed in Washington all that time ago is not the same person who arrived in San Diego. Next, I'll be beginning a new chapter of my adventure as I cross the border into Mexico and begin the Baja Divide. <laughs>